session and reading most of it too as well. <laughs> yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Shalay Willis Butts. I'm program liaison. Uh, nice to see everyone today. So we will get started. All right, so our agenda for today. So we're gonna do some quick introductions soon. Um, you just add your name in the chat. <clears throat> uh, we'll do a structured activities overview. We're gonna go through some planning strategies and spend a main portion of our time doing some lesson planning. Um, this is structured lesson planning for OST. We'll do a test drive. So you guys get to go on some breakout rooms, work with each other. Um, test drive your lesson planning skills and what you gain from the session today. We'll have share out, so you will be sharing. So prepare in your group to have someone be uh, voluntold to share for your group or selected. And then we'll end the discussion, uh, the session with a debrief. All right, some community agreements. Um, so it is one mic. Uh, we'll ask you if, you know, if um, to put, questions in the chat if you have to, or if you, um, since it's a smaller session, we'll say your name and ask you to unmute. Uh, but for right now, just keep muted. Um, participation is really important. So when we do ask questions, if you could just add the, your comments into the chat, again, we'll ask you to unmute um, at that time. And just to really participate in the uh, discussion portion of the today's activity, if you can keep your cameras on, uh, lend a helping hand, is one big community agreement we have. Taking notes is a next big community agreement. We are not sharing these slides. So please, if you have a moment, grab a piece of paper, grab a pencil, grab your phone, take some screenshots. Um, this is being recorded so you can look back at it, but we are not um, sharing the PowerPoint. Be open-minded. So just you know, uh, accepting what people's comments are and just, uh, <clears throat> be willing to share your opinion as well. Having fun. So that's a big thing with OST. If you cannot be weird in OST, then you're gonna have to try something. Um, and then just type questions in the chat. All right. So I feel like there's something missing here. So we didn't get a chance to um, put, can we go back real quick? So there are, maybe at the bottom, I can't see it. Uh, so at the corner, you see an apple. So throughout the presentation, there's gonna be little apples. The presenter might say apple. This is just to make sure that you guys are up and at them. So if you don't know, all the way at the bottom, ne next to the leave button, don't leave us, but next to the leave button, there are reactions. So at times, if you know one of the presenters say apple, or if you know you see an apple in the corner, or you see the word apple in the corner, just click on the reactions and give us some clapping. Um, going on. And as you come in, um, just introduce yourself, your name, what organization you come from, and if your organization has multiple sites, what site you're working with. And can you also add, we want to, I would like to know what model you work with as well, because I'm curious if we have elementary, middle school, high school folks. Yes, and thank you for all the good mornings. I really appreciate seeing that in the chat. Yes. All right, so as we are doing that, we're gonna get into uh, the meat of things. So what are structured activities? The big question of the day. Um, so pay a particular attention to our underlying uh, points of our definition. So structured activities are intentionally designed activities that are sequential and have a starting point and stopping point that culminates in a skill share, celebratory moment, or performance. Structured activities uh, require planning and preparation. So for, for my few, my handful of folks that are on camera, thank you, shout out to you. I see y'all taking notes, excellent job. Again, I'm gonna emphasize these underlying points, okay? Structured activities are intentional. They don't just fall out the sky. You don't wake up one day and have this whole thing planned out. They have to be intentional. They have to be designed ahead of time. There needs to be a sequence, an order, a beginning, a middle, an end, first, second, third, till you come to the end. There should be a culmination at the end. So you don't just stop. 
you have some kind of way to showcase whatever skill the students learn. Um, you celebrate, hey, we did it, we made it. Um, you can have a product, any kind of moment that uh, celebrates what it was that they worked on for this series of time. Um, they require planning and preparation. We're gonna say that a lot today. We're gonna say intentional a lot. We're gonna say planning, preparedness, all of that, um, because that's what separates structured activities from, uh, hmm, what are we gonna do today? Random activities that just fill space. That's what makes structured activities structured. It's the planning, it's the intentional design ahead of time. Uh, we mentioned culminating events, which a lot of us are probably familiar with hearing or thinking about. Uh, we have to keep in mind that even though we're trying to get to the end, the emphasis on structured activities is the process. We really emphasize the process more so than the product. Yes, we want to have a culmination, a skill share, performance, a product, but we really are learning every step of the way, the beginning, the middle, and the end, so that throughout this process, even if our product doesn't come out the way we intend intended it to, which I don't know about you guys, but in my experience, most of the time it does not. I have in my mind what I want it to look like. Um, sometimes it's better, sometimes we miss the mark. But as long as we all, the students, as well as myself, my staff, learn along the way, that's the most important thing. It's about the process over the product. Write that down if you didn't write it. All right, you can take that even beyond structured activities. Take that in life, process over product. Sometimes I beat myself up sometimes. Like, man, this didn't turn out how I wanted it to. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, why structured activities? Another great question. Um, taking a moment to see if anybody was following the directions that Luz gave us earlier. Thank you, Stephanie. Shout out to Stephanie with our clap. Kelly, thank you so much. Had to take a brief moment to shout you guys out. Thank you so much. Um, so why structured activities? There's our keyword again, because they are intentional. I'm sure we uh, have had experiences at some point in our life where maybe you showed up to uh, a meeting or some kind of gathering and there was just no agenda. <laughs> Felt like there was no purpose to us being here and how uncomfortable and awkward and just boring that can be. Um, we use structured activities so that we can have a, a point to the things that we're doing so that we can have an effect on uh, the lives that we're interacting with. Structured activities allow our students to be hands on with the topics that we're learning. So anybody can read a book or do a worksheet, um, but to really take the time to dig into a subject matter that allows our students to really get their hands dirty and learn a little bit deeper um, into whatever the theme or the, the topic is. Structured activities allow for you to build skills in the students. Um, so they're coming to us from all walks of life, of all areas and levels of understanding. We get to take the time to really focus on a topic and build better human beings, right? That's the hope anyway, that's the goal. Um, it, structured activities help to cultivate creativity. So you may, again, be learning about math or geometry or something like that, but you actually have an opportunity through a structured activity to maybe build something, um, have the students figure out how can we take these materials and turn it into something else so that it you know serves our purpose. And uh, you'd be surprised how every brain works differently. You get to see that um, in real life. Structured activities should be youth driven. So I'm taking a moment if you wanna get on the mic or if you wanna type in the chat box, what's the difference between um, an activity that is youth driven versus adult driven? Or can you define what youth driven means? Can answer on the mic or I see Crystal with her hand raised. If you wanna get on the mic, go for it. Um, in my opinion, youth driven is more so the kids um, telling you what they wanna do or give you an idea of what you wanna do. Uh, what they want to do and, you know, implement in their ideas into the activities versus like teacher driven or group leader um, driven is when the group leader says, okay, you guys are going to do this, this way and that way. And the, the kids just follow. I don't know if I could have said it better myself. That was, that was perfect. Does anybody have anything they want to add to that? I mean, that was really well done. Any other comments? I think I saw in the chat box, students are the leaders. Thank you. 
that was pretty perfect, Crystal. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, the students are the leaders, they are the inspiration. Um, so whether they actually have a hand in um, taking charge of certain aspects of the activity, or whether they're just, like I said, the inspiration, they say, hey, I'm really into cars, or can we try to do it this way or that way? Um, and you design a, a activity that's around what it is that you know that they're interested in, that they like to do, that they have skills in doing, um, that's perfect. Versus adult driven, who are the ones making all the decisions from beginning, middle to the end. Um, our structured activities, you want them to be youth driven so that the kids want to participate and that they get out of it what they need. Um, so thank you for that. Structured activity should be fun. Lou said, if you're not into being wild and crazy and silly and goofy, might not be in the right business, right? I, I know we all have a little bit, we may have to turn it off and on depending on the situation, but we all have at least a little something in us so that we can bring that to the table um, and even pull that out of the students so that we can just have fun together while we're learning and building skills. Um, and then last point, of course, it, it keeps the youth engaged. They're invested in, uh, in, this, in these topics a little bit more versus if they're just given worksheets or something like that. On the right side, this is contract stuff, which some of you guys uh, may or may not be familiar with. But of course, um, it's an ask from our funders to make sure that we are implementing uh, structured activities in these different areas, creative and performing arts, athletics, um, and health and STEM. The, the possibilities are endless when it comes to structured activities. You can take any topic and make it into a structured activity as long as it's intentionally designed. Um, and for the students, uh, using structured activities allows students to be invested. Um, they help to prepare the students to experience and learn in exciting ways to obtain basic everyday skills that they need to survive in this crazy, ever-changing world, right? That's our goal behind our structured activities. Any comments? Okay. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add that um, for the key performance indicators, um, I know we have some friends from Philadelphia Parks and Rec um, on the line. So just want to let you know that um, these key performance indicators are specifically for our OCF OST funded sites. So um, for uh, Parks and Rec, you all may have different um, deliverables, but these are just specifically for, um, for our, um, our uh, OCF OST, OCF OST, yeah. <laughs> letter soup um, programs. Um, and Stephanie, um, just in the um, chat, she put PPR uses search. So um, Stephanie, did you wanna add anything to that? Hi everybody, Hi. I'm Stephanie Gradle. I'm the um, after school program coordinator for Philadelphia Parks and Recreation. Um, our key performance indicators, uh, for those of my, my few that are on the line, uh, we use the acronym SEARCH. It stands for sports and athletics, environmental education and outdoor activities, arts, reading, literacy and STEM, um, creative and cultural, or culture and community, I'm sorry, and health and fitness. So similar to uh, the way that OCF uses their structure, we, we use that structure to record our um, structured activities. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. I did not know that, and now I do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And, Absolutely. And, and again, as, as I mentioned, with structured activities, you can literally <laughs> do anything and everything. Um, it's really about the, the concept, the mindset, the approach that you bring to um, to the activities, the topics, the themes that you're making, making sure that they're intentionally designed. Thank you. All right, we can move to the next slide. So what counts? What counts in, in this world, this concept of structured activities? So there's our key word again, activities. There are intentional, okay? If I haven't said it enough, I, I hope that gets stuck in your brain. Intentionally designed lesson plans that result in a culminating event. If you don't remember anything else, that's it right there. Intentionally designed lesson plans. Remember our sequence, our order of events um, that culminate in, in some kind of end product and result. Uh, you can do anything. So it could be projects, project-based learning, experiential learning, service learning. That's one format that you can use to implement structured activities. Another format, uh, clubs with lesson plans. 
because again, you can have, let's say a basketball club that kids are really into, but what makes it, what separates it and makes it a structured activity is that you have uh, a design, you have lesson plans and you're building towards something, okay? Um, partnerships, so even if you're not the ones implementing the activities, you may have partnerships with ASAP or Girls Who Code or any other um, partners like that. They can still also implement structured activities in your uh, program if they have intentionally designed activities, right? Um, you can purchase curriculum that can help you do that. So maybe a subject matter that you're not familiar with, but the kids are interested in learning, um, you can purchase a curriculum that can help you with that. You take bits and pieces of the lesson plans and a theme, a point, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to get to, have a culminating event, and there you go. Um, and then, of course, contracted content experts. You can hire somebody for your site um, to deliver a specific content area uh, as long as it's intentionally designed. Any questions, comments before we move on? We're good? Self-explanatory? All right, we can go to the next slide. All right, so I see something on this slide. So, Shelly, please shout out people as they do follow the instructions if they remember there is an app on that screen Victoria, there. Victoria, Kelly, Donna, Tina, Don, Woo! thank you. Uh, yes. Chanel, Jessica, there we go. Love it. That, that's what I'm talking about. That's that That's that afternoon OST working with kids flair. All right. So to be intentional, we have to think about how we're gonna get started. So these are some questions to help you think again, how to intentionally plan. So there's some startup questions that are really important to think about when you're beginning to create these activities and plans and lessons and you know purchase curriculum. You got to get inspired. You know, you got to buy into it as much as the kids needs to buy into it and you got to think fun. So will this be fun for myself, my my students, the program? Uh, so the first question you really want to ask uh, yourself um, when you're thinking about this and presenting this is what are my students interests so getting to know the kids so right now we're in January so you kind of know a little bit more or less you tried a few activities maybe anything that is related with you know sports is a little bit more interesting for your kids versus art and then sometimes that switches maybe next year all your kids are really interested in art versus sports so just being that flexible so it's really important to get to know what your students' interests are so that when you introduce activities, they're interested. Exactly, you know, that's the main thing. They're interested in the activity and it's not gonna be something that they're not willing to do. They're in after school. And then the good thing about um, after school is that you guys have an amazing opportunity. You don't have to follow a set curriculum, you know, through the school district and stuff. You have the opportunity to dive deep into what the kids are interested in. So in the school time, they might not be able to talk about, you know, STEM as much as they want to, or maybe a specific science topic, or maybe an art topic, because they got to keep it rolling. But you can actually sit there and do some research and open their minds, you know, to that specific art form. And that's the great power about that. So really thinking about what the students' interests are. And with thinking what the students' interests, can your students relate to this activity? So maybe they're interested in, you know, media, you know, social media is a big thing now. So what form of media do you want to introduce to them, right? Do you want to, you're not going to go out there and bring out a VHS because half of them don't even know what you you brought out. This foreign ancient object that you found in Egypt digging through stuff, they don't know what that is anymore. So you're going to bring topics that relate to what is now, right? So TikTok, right? So you might bring that up or some other uh, social media things, if you're gonna do media. So just thinking about, can they relate to the activity is another portion. Because if you're gonna go bring in old school stuff, they might like that and be like, ooh, you, you know, they might be interested in seeing the struggle that we went through when the thing got stuck in the v, you, you know, VCR. And, but then they might be like, no, don't even try to do that to us. So just thinking about how it relates to their, their life now. Uh, and with having it relates to what, uh, their life is now, you can really spark more interest in things that they never even knew. Uh, the following question is, what are your interests? What are your interests, your staff interests? So whether you're writing the curriculum, your staff is writing the curriculum, or you're purchasing it, 
what are you interested in is the next thing. So first, what are your students interested in you? Because you're going to have to teach it. If you're not interested in it, they're going to smell it, hear it, feel it. They know, and they're not going to buy in. So if you so happen to find an interest that works well with both, or if you want to spend some time showing the kids a little bit of your interest and giving them that exposure or something they never went to, that's really good. Because when you're interested in something, that energy, that fire comes off to the kids and it's really important that they see different things. They are only seeing the same thing every day, you know, from people that they're, you know, they only know certain careers because of what they're exposed to. So if you're able to show them a little bit of your interests, your talents, whether you do photography, and even if it doesn't work out for a whole week, at least you try. Sometimes you do a lesson, works out for a week, you gotta throw it out the window because it just didn't work. You might have to try again. Um, the next thing, uh, question on here, you got to think about when you're getting started is, are you capable of teaching this? Are you interested? And do you have the knowledge and feel comfortable? Are you willing to, if you're going to do a topic that the kids are interested, are you willing and have the time to do the extra research to understand? If you're going to teach this topic to the kids, you're going to have to do research. That's that intentional again. You're going to have to do research to make sure you're providing the right information to them. And also making sure that you don't go out there and just are looking at paper and like, hold on, it, it doesn't work. So really just, are you thinking, think about it. Like if it's a math thing and you're like, nah, I'm not gonna even try to do that. I might ruin these kids for life. Um, so just thinking about, are you willing to do that research? Do you have time to do that research? And maybe if you're not capable of teaching and the kids are interested, looking in your organizations to see if there's other staff working together, are there other staff who are interested in this topic? <clears throat> and then thinking, what do I need to know to teach this? So that's the big thing. What do I need to know to teach this? Do I have time to do that? Will this engage my students? Now, this might sound the same as interest, but it's actually not. They might be interested in something, but the way you present it is gonna be completely different. So if they're interested in art, you just showing some art history might not work to keep them engaged. You're going to have to do hands-on activities. So interest and engagement are different things. You're going to have to incorporate hands-on activities, uh, maybe some trips to go along with it. So those are ideas that you should be thinking when you're getting started. How will you engage them once you know what they're interested in and what you are interested in? The following question is, will my students learn something meaningful? This is really important to structured activities. We want them to gain something. So what are they going to gain through this experience? We don't want them doing activities just for activity's sake. We want at the end for them to present something. Um, so, you know, if they're building birdhouses and it doesn't come out the best birdhouse, the experience of him building and being so proud of that janky birdhouse that no bird will fit in, is what the meaningful is in there, right? The bird's gonna call social services on them for building the house, but he is proud and you're not gonna say nothing to him because he's gonna own that. And you want that experience to go and you're gonna be excited for him. And what's the meaningful about it is that he got something or he, she got something to take home. They got something to take home. They got something to be proud of and they learned something. Cause then maybe the next time they build a birdhouse, this is a mansion. And now they have that experience to say that, okay, I went from step one to this. And that goes with what is the end goal product? This is a really big question. When you're doing any thinking about doing a project or activity, there should be a goal for each day, each lesson, maybe each week, and then an overall arching goal for after six weeks or so, they're gonna have A done, B done, C done. And this could be, you know, many different things. This can be an exhibition of skills. We'll, we'll get to that soon. But you really want to think, what is the end goal product that they're taking home? Any questions? All right. Just type them in the chat. We'll stop if there's a question, uh, but we'll keep on going. All right. Now you got your ideas set up, okay? So you're gonna move on to design. So you know what you're interested, you know what your kids are interested, you got a few ideas here and there. Um, now you gotta start creating a plan. So think with the end in mind. 
it's the easiest for me and I, it works for the most people I talk to, just thinking of what you want to do. So if I want to have a showcase, an art showcase as my end, now I have to go backwards and kind of think, what do my kids need to learn so that we can do that showcase? Because if I start doing activities first and I'm like, oh no, I don't know how activity from week one is going to mesh with two, how that's going to keep going, it might be harder. So if you think, okay, I want to showcase, that's my end goal. How can I work backwards to make sure that they have enough information and learned enough to do that showcase? You want to set them up for success. And igniting that imagination. Come in and introduce the project and think about it as crazy as you can if, if you think about it. Come in rapping, come in dress crazy. Like, you know, the kids are gonna look at you, but they're gonna remember for the rest of their lives these experiences. And you're gonna get that bio. So think of, you know, some field trips that might be related to it. Um, really just igniting that imagination and doing things. Again, you have the power to do things that we don't, um, that kids aren't experiencing during a school day. And when you're th um, planning this out, the big thing is having an activity plan for each day. Each activity has a plan. So if you're doing four activities in a day, you're gonna have to have four activity plans. It might sound like a lot, but as it goes on, it'll be really easy to write them through. You wanna break down activities, um, like I mentioned, by a goal of the day. So what are they gaining today? And then what are they gonna gain by the end of the week by doing this activity? And then building up. So maybe, you know, if we're gonna focus on art, or basketball, you know, what skills are they gonna build? You know, how are they gonna build up on that skill to keep building up to do a basketball showcase? You wanna break them down as much as possible. You really wanna ensure movement. They've been sitting all day. So, you know, really when you're doing these activities, I say like 10 minutes introducing the activity always, then doing the activity and then 10 minutes closing. Um, if it's an hour, um, you're working with them for the activity time. Just try to incorporate, think about how can I make this hands-on? We don't want to have you doing a whole lecture for that hour, no. And we don't want worksheets. Sometimes you need worksheets so they can write notes or complete an activity, but we really want to focus on hands-on activities, whether touching, building, building with, with materials. Um, so just think about whatever you're doing, how can you make that hands-on? Be detailed as possible. The more detailed you have, the more planning is done and you won't go into an activity thinking that you're gonna be there for an hour and the kids did it in 15 minutes. That is the trauma that I had in early experiencing teaching children. I thought, oh, you know, it's gonna be fine. We got an hour and then they're like, I'm done. And I'm just like, whoa, okay. The more you plan, you know, the easier it is. Um, and then if they don't finish that day, then you just continue on to the next day but it's better to have more things planned out than to just sit there trying to figure out what to do. So again, create daily, weekly goals, and you should always have an opening activity. So you should always explain to the kids, you know, what's happening that day, uh, have a little quick icebreaker, um, something just to wake them up, get them into it. Then you have your main activity and you should always close your activity with a review. They need to understand as much as anyone, what was the purpose of what you just had them do that day? Because they will eventually ask you, why are we doing this? And you want to, you know, be open with them and just say, hey, you know, we did this today, you know, for this. And how did you feel about that? So that you can keep going with that and see if they kind of enjoy that. And make the culminating event your own. So think outside of the box, ask the kids what they think. Um, just try your best to make it as exciting as possible so that the work that they did for however many weeks or days, they're excited to say, oh my God, you know, next week is the culminating event. They can just have that empowerment, that ownership to just give them that excitement. That's the big thing with culminating events. Again, as we go, just type in your questions in the chat. I'll, um, I don't know if there's any hands up. Do you guys see any hands up? No? Okay, cool. All right, so we'll go to the next one. All right, so some tips for implementation. So we have our outcomes. So there's academic outcomes. We want the kids to learn something. All those wonderful 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, you can Google that list. Um, does it, those two just are the first ones that always come off my brain. Uh, maybe 
fitness is the outcome. Uh, cultivating interest is the biggest outcome, you know, for me, just with exposure and having kids understand, you know, that there's other things out there than what they already know. And there's other outcomes as well. So when you're thinking about those outcomes, the next thing you want to focus on is, okay, this, if it's fitness is my outcome or cultivating their interest, how can I present that to them? Sometimes whole group works well. So you're talking, addressing the whole class. Sometimes small groups work even better. And then independent is the next step. You really want to incorporate all these um, settings into your activities. So in one day, maybe you're like, okay, well, I'm going to address the whole group. And then I'm going to break you guys down to smaller groups. Last 10 minutes, you'll work on your own, or maybe you work on your own. And then the last 20 minutes, you do the small group. And then we come back as a whole group. So settings are important because, you know, there's some kids who work better in a whole group, small group, or independent. So you just want to make sure that you're allowing them to have those different settings. And then strategies. So Depending on the activities, sometimes centers might work better. A game might work better. A read aloud will probably work for a lot of things. Um, read alouds you can do for a lot. I can go on, on that, but I won't. Um, journaling helps for some youth. Maybe journaling doesn't work for them. So just trying different strategies and incorporating to see what works best for your youth. But at least having them try one of these strategies at some point researching depending on the idea role playing and then uses of technology technology is a big thing now at the bottom is a big tip when you are doing your lesson plans at the end of each lesson you should really write notes um take notes of what went well what didn't go well so that when you do the activity again either with the next group if you're rotating or maybe next year you know okay this didn't work well you know the journaling didn't work well or you know it, journaling really worked well this group of kids really love journaling now i'm going to incorporate journaling uh taking those notes really helps you to then think about what the next day is and then trusting your students is a big thing if a question comes up and you can't answer it at that time or it's completely it's on topic but kind of not on topic and they kind of want to steer it off a little way don't just don't deny it Go ahead, do that research, let them ask their questions, let them put that input. The lesson can always be finished or activity can be finished the next day. You don't wanna put a stop to any individual learning. And then trusting your students to kind of do their thing as well. So if they're asking questions or something takes longer than what you thought, there's not a problem to again, extend it. Sometimes activities you think like the opposite, which is good. So you might have planned an activity, think it was gonna be 45 minutes, they really enjoyed it and now it's two days long. You know, don't stop it just because you're on a timeline. You know, trust the students to kind of grow with the activity and always identify your goals of the day for yourself and your kids. I wanted to add one piece, Lou, Go ahead. To, uh, yeah. to the setting uh, portion, of course, keeping in mind, you know, how you want to deliver or the best way to deliver your activity or your portions of the activity, but also your setting, meaning the space that you're in. So you may be in a classroom, maybe the only space you have access to is the gym or the multi-purpose room. So you may want to do whole group or even small group activities, um, but keeping in, in mind, okay, if I have them and I wanna do a whole group activity, but there's an echo in the gym, maybe that might not be the best option uh, because it's gonna interfere with hearing or you know, the small groups might uh, distract each other. So always keep in mind uh, the, your spacing as well as we're in this pandemic. So some activities you want them to get all close to each other and work on this activity together, but mm, can we really do that? Should we do that? Uh, you know, the closeness and the interaction. So you might have to uh, revamp your lessons or activities to accommodate your space, your mm -hmm. pandemic, <laughs> different things like that. So just keep that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. All right, so let's think about the end. So this is the exciting part. This is where you're pumped, you're fired. Your kid's been working on this activity for let's say four to six weeks. Now, how are you gonna showcase and be excited and reward them for this amazing work that they have been doing with you, right? So what is the culminating activity or event? So this is just an event that really just shows what they've been learning 
for however many weeks. So ideally maybe four weeks or so, um, they've been working on this activity. So you really wanna make it as exciting as you can. Um, just as fire, you know, what, what decorations can you get? You know, just really think about and incorporating the kids' opinion in this as well. Uh, what do they wanna see? So you're really thinking, what are you presenting as the student's activity? And how can you show what the students learn? You've been working on this for six weeks um, or four weeks, however long. Uh, is it an exhibition? Is it a showcase? Is it a fair? Are they building something and taking home a product, making a video, um, and just making it as excited as possible? How can you show and allow the kids ownership of this? Um, with, you know, everything going on and, you know, events and stuff in the pandemic, things get a little different. Um, in the past, we would love to invite as many family members as possible, invite as many community members as possible to make the event bigger. Um, but, you know, give or take, depending on how and space and location, you know, you might, could, you could just do a Zoom event where the kids talk about it. So just think about how can you make the kids really excited of it and think and think about how can you make this last a lifetime? How can you make this a lifetime memory for them? Um, so thinking about, you know, if it's a video, you know, make sure each kid gets a copy of it. If it's, you know, them doing a cookbook, make sure that they get a copy of the cookbook, but then go do like tastings, you know, tastings of everything that they cooked at that time. If it's doing a showcase, you know, and they're showing their art, make an art show where they actually have to sell tickets and things like that, make it, you know, big. Um, and maybe, you know, it'll be a few days, just depending on what you're working with, just think how can you really um, honor these kids and honor the work that they did with you. All right, transition break. A lot of talking. <laughs> I couldn't find my mute button for a second. All right, take a little breather. We'll take a moment have a minuscule amount of fun. All right, we can go to the next slide. Anybody know what this is? Has anybody seen this activity before? I hope everyone is familiar with uh, Where's Waldo? Uh, I have a love-hate relationship with Waldo because sometimes he kind of stresses me out. Um, so the object of the game is to find Waldo. So look at the picture, please. Um, and do we have annotation abilities, Naomi, or do I need to do that? Yes. So everybody, you will see on your toolbar um, right by, uh, it, it, it should say annotate. And you can just press that and um, you'll be able to draw or put a stamp. You can um, put a circle, anything you like. So I will demonstrate that really quickly. So I just um, clicked on annotate and then I'm just I'm, I'm not going to circle. I'll say just... don't circle Waldo. Yeah, I'm not going to circle. That would not be Waldo. fair. But I'll circle something. <laughs> <laughs> so I just circled something. All right. If not, so... You can always put it in the chat as well where you think yes. Waldo is. Yes. So where is Waldo, folks? See, quick again. There we go. That was easy, as per usual. That was a warm up, guys. That was the warm up, Waldo. All right. So everybody sees them, right? Because we had a few quick folks. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so can we go to the next one? Which hopefully, you're not the worst. I'm the worst. <laughs> Usually, oh, this is a good one. All right, Luz told me I had to step my game up. So here's a second Where's Waldo to hopefully be a little bit more challenging. Do we see Waldo here? Hopefully it'll take a little bit longer. Oh my goodness. Y'all are putting me to shame. I gotta step it up again. All right, that was really good. I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. All right, next, all right, next one. I'm gonna find something even harder, but no, that's great guys. Uh-oh, somebody doesn't even know who Waldo is. All right, you got to Google, where is Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> in my Google search uh, the other day, apparently in England, they call him, where is Wally? Did anybody know that? Like, I just found that out the other day. That's like the British version of where's Waldo? Ew, but anyway. Yes, yeah, so they call him, where is Wally? Uh, but same thing. 
All right. So we had that moment. Uh, back to business, back to work. So lesson planning. So Luz has already touched on this. We're going to dig a little bit deeper so we can make sure we understand um, each portion of the individual lesson plan. So remember, we talked about, of course, the overall project or structured activity, the culminating event. Um, and this is this is the point where we're talking about the sequences, the each individual activity that leads to that culminating um, product at the end. So you must start with an opening activity. So at the beginning, you're communicating with your students or as you're thinking about your planning, what is the objective? What is it that you want the students to gain by the end of this individual lesson? So of course you're keeping in mind your end product, your culminating event, your overall overarching goal. But for this activity, I want them to have gained this portion of the skill that we're working towards, right? So that's your objective. You're gonna provide an overview to your students saying, this is what we're working on. Today, we're gonna to do this, which is building off of what we did last week. And next week we'll do, you know, so on and so forth. Have an icebreaker or a transition. You don't wanna just go right into math or whatever the topic is. You wanna have something to kind of ease them in, to gain their attention so that they're with you and they're excited about what they're going to be doing for the day. It doesn't have to be, you know, major, something quick, something brief to get them warmed up, right? You don't exercise, or you shouldn't exercise without warming up first, when it get, be loose and limber. Um, then you have your main activity. So on that section, you're listing the materials. Lou's mentioned be as detailed as possible. So yes, you're mentioning you need 12 pencils, you need paper, um, you know, what kind of paper, uh, if there's materials that you need to order ahead of time, you already have the list there. So you know what it is you need to order or gather, collect from your storage area, list the steps and procedures. Imagine that someone else is going to be implementing this activity. So you may know up here in your head, um, but you want to be as detailed as possible. Have students sit on the rug in a circle, uh, break them up into groups of this amount. Uh, tell them this, uh, if you want to write a script, of course, you're not going to be reading off the paper on the day of, but you want to, again, have as many details as possible. If you have questions, anticipate possible responses so that you can have an idea of where you want the conversation to go, but also still leaving room for uh, the students to contribute to the process as well. And then you end your closing activity. There should always be some kind of reflection at the end. You had your objective. How do you know your objective was achieved if you don't ask? So you ask the students questions. Um, ideally open-ended questions, not just, hey, did you guys like that? Yeah. You want to ask something a little bit deeper to gauge, did they get what I was given? Let me see. Um, and you want them to take it beyond just the classroom. So get them thinking even after your group time is over. Um, so there's some suggestions there, journals, discussions, drawings, exit tickets. Those are some options for closing activities. Questions, comments? We've seen lesson plans before. This is just a, a general breakdown of lesson plans that you should be creating. Let me go to the next one. So we took a moment to look at the individual lesson. Now, how do you put those lessons together to where you're, you're going somewhere? You're going to your, your final destination that you set beforehand. Um, so the this sample, this uh, skeleton is, you see the end product is a basketball exhibition of skills, right? So you had this brilliant idea, you know, your kids are really into basketball, you did some research and you decided that we're gonna have a basketball showcase. They're gonna show all the things that they worked on over these course of however many weeks or days. So let's say you decide, okay, we're gonna start off with uh, a specific player. All the kids are really into, somebody throw out a name. The kids are really into this player. Who is it? Give me a name. First name I see her here. Irving. Irving. All right. Thank you, Crystal. On it. She is on it today. So all the kids are into Irving, right? So I found some information. Maybe it's a book or maybe it's an article or a video about Irving. Um, maybe I want to also tackle, since we're talking about basketball, make sure everybody knows about basketball, right? So I'm going to review the game in general, uh, rules of the game. Uh, since we're building on skills, maybe work on dribbling the first day, I don't know, or shooting or passing the first day. Uh, so we learn how to do that correctly, the correct te technique for that. 
um, take note of their skills because we want to see that they've progressed. So we'll see where we are today. No judgment, kids. It's all right if you can't dribble two, more than two times. It's okay. We just want to see where we are today because by the end, we hope that you'll feel a little bit more confident um, in your basketball skills. Um, so they learn it, they work on it. And then at the end, we kind of have a discussion at the end to see how they're feeling about it. So we're learning about Irving, learning about the rules of the game and begin our skills practice. That's lesson one, right? Because the end is an exhibition of skills. What do you think would be a natural progression for lesson two? That's for anybody on the mic or in the chat. What do you think should come next in our sequence, in our series of events? Pop quiz. Y'all didn't know it was coming, but it's here. Don't everybody speak at once. We will volunteer somebody. So I'm going to pick on... I'm going to pick on Crystal. Crystal, can you share? What do you think will come next? Um, I would have my kids continue to work on the skills, like practicing their skills. Um, maybe try to incorporate some type of journaling, like maybe asking them a question. Um, how do you think you could get better at this skill? Um, I'm not really familiar with basketball, um, but I would try to, you know, implement a writing or, you know, a discussion question and then just have them continue to work on practicing those skills. Yes. Don't feel bad, Crystal. Neither am I. Uh, I shared with a previous group that uh, when I did use, uh, I knew the kids were into basketball and I'm not. So I used one of my staff and picked his brain on everything from what basketball to buy to what should the kids know. And together we created the lesson plans his knowledge on the subject matter and my knowledge on making lesson plans um, and we're able to uh, create something. So don't feel bad to you, Crystal, or anyone in here. Um, so yes, of course, you want to continue building on the skills. I saw that in the chat box as well. Um, you start off broad and you get closer and closer and closer to your, your destination. So that's why we started off. If we're looking at the, the bio, the history of Irving, and we're looking at the rules of the game and the initial skill, that's our, our broad, that's our umbrella, right? How do we make that a little bit tighter? So yes, we continue to working on, on the skills. Maybe we dig a little bit deeper into Irving personally. Maybe we look into his background, his individual background um, or other players. Uh, if we're talking about the rules of the game, maybe we look at, uh, what do you call it? The, the industry itself. Um, there's a number of different angles, directions that you could take with this, but you wanna start off broad and get closer and closer and closer to your to your destination. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? So uh, depending on, of course, your model that you're working with, if it's elementary, middle school, or high school, you want to do something that is um, age appropriate as you're taking that approach. Um, thank you for that that input in the chat box. Thinking about college rules versus NBA rules. There's so many different angles that you can take not only just not only this subject, but any subject. So sometimes that's the hardest part, making a choice, making the decision at the beginning, because you can do so much. You just decide, okay, where are we going? Um, if we're focusing on, because they love Irving so much, we want to learn everything about him so that by the end, we can have little mini Irvings displaying their skills. So again, we may learn about his personal history, his, his workout regimen. What does his diet look like? Um, you know, what was his journey to getting to the NBA? So we can tackle and have a lesson for each of those aspects or it might take more because once we dig deep, we might find the kids are really excited about a certain thing and we might want to spend more time um, in any given area. Um, but if we're focusing on Irving, he's our theme, then we want to learn everything we can about him, not just idolize him, but really what can we do to make ourselves similar to him or get to where he is? And then we show off at the end with our exhibition, right? So that's an idea of how you might want to try to tackle and break them down. That's looking at Irving. Um, Naomi, you mentioned about college versus uh, MBA. So if you want to look at the industry, your breakdown might look a little bit different on those individual lesson plans. Any questions or comments or thoughts about that? 
Okay, we can move to the next slide. All right, so keep it on building on lessons. Um, so this one has a little bit more, eh, just one more in there. But uh, so this topic will start at the end. So the idea here, and this curriculum was inspired by Teachers Pay Teachers, which Teachers Pay Teachers is amazing. If you don't know about them, you better do. Get to learn it, Google it. Um, so the idea is for, we're starting at the end. So all the way to your right, the youth are gonna showcase 3D food truck models. Now, in order for them to do 3D food truck models, well, they need the food truck model, right? So let's move back. So then we're gonna follow up. So they need to design the truck. So to create the 3D food truck models, we're gonna focus a few lessons on designing the truck, right? So now I know that I have to keep moving back. So remember in the beginning, we mentioned knowing what you're fit, you want the end product to be and then working back. Now, when you design the food truck, you wanna make sure that if you're doing a taco truck, your food truck don't got ice cream on. So then what do you need the kids to think about that? You're moving back again creating the menu for them to understand how to create the menu, then they can understand how to design the food truck. So you're moving back to creating the menu. Moving back one more step further, understanding the business. They cannot do any of these things without understanding the business. So you guys got a gist of how I started at the end. I want them to create a food truck thing and I needed to think about what I wanted to do. So when you move forward, you're gonna go and you're gonna think, okay, what are, so if you notice it's one to five lessons on just understanding the business. You can go and think about what elements you want them to understand the business. Um, each day could be a different thing. So it could be bringing in someone who has a food truck to talk about, it's up to you. This is just a idea of what you want and how you kind of build backwards. So the first one's like understanding the business, now that they understand the business, they got to create the menu. Maybe with creating the menu, you can talk about marketing. There's many different possibilities depending on your audience, your youth, um, how deep you want to go into that. So with creating the menu, you can have them create their own physical menu. What makes sense? Uh, if you want to get really down, like, you know, advertising, what colors work best together? You know, if it's an ice cream truck versus a pizza truck. Um, and then with understanding the business portion, where do ice cream trucks want to park near schools? You know, uh, you don't want a salad truck in front of the school. I mean, the kid's going to eat it, but they're not going to stand next to the ice cream truck. Who, who, who are the kids running to? Who are the kids going to? You know, that kind of marketing idea. And then once they understand creating the menu, you know, they have that vision to design the, the truck and then they can do their showcase. So there's a lot of subtopics we can go into each of these. So you're spending a few times, um, if you notice again, the first time is one to five, the food truck six through 10 is the menu, and then 10 to 15 is design the truck and then showcasing that. So really just thinking about, you know, starting at the end and making our way back. Um, uh, Shale, I'm gonna pass it on to you. I have to go to another meeting, but if you could just ask them a little bit of maybe some elements, there's five lessons on just understanding the food truck. So what could those five, lessons be in detail. And I'll see you guys later, You're leaving you in the wonderful hands of Shale. She's gonna take over and bye. <laughs> bye, Luz. So she gave us some homework. She's just gonna homework and dash. Homework and out. This. Wow, wow. Okay, so, but great question. So if you have just that first portion, so we already had practice with our previous slide with the basketball topic. Um, so we have food trucks. So how would you take this first portion of understanding the business, the food truck business, and break this down into three to five activities? What would the process be? Step one, two, three. What do you think? Well, I have one. Um, for starters, I, I like to show videos when we're doing things like this, of things that like were successful. So, um, and at my site, we're doing um, a lemonade stand. Um, and the first activity that I did or, you know, created for the group leaders were to have them show videos of like Alex lemonade stands where like the kids was able to talk about the steps that they took and what was successful and what wasn't successful. So that would be one, 
one of the first things that I would have them do. Awesome. Thank you for that. So just another kind of mobile food business, right? So the food truck, but you're talking about the lemonade stands. Those don't usually stay in one spot. They can be anywhere. Um, and I see in the, the chat box about starting with the evolution of food trucks. Absolutely, because we're starting broad, right? So we got to start somewhere. Food trucks didn't just automatically become a thing. They had to start somewhere. So that makes sense to start broadly, start with the history. What will become next? What do you think the next thing would be? And again, we want to keep things engaging and exciting uh, for the students. So have individual students that you work with in mind uh, as, you're, as you're thinking about your response. What is it that you think they would be interested in knowing next? That makes sense. Um, so Victoria said Google popular trucks in the area. Yeah, absolutely. Designing the menu. Yep. Because of course, and you know, if you Google the popular food trucks in the area, you know they're going to want to go there, right? Uh, so keeping that in mind, wherever that comes in the uh, in the planning phase, you know those kids are going to be like, we don't want to just talk about the taco truck down the street. It'd be nice if we could visit or maybe have them come to us. That would be lovely. The upkeep of a food truck. You know, some people don't visit food trucks because like, Ugh, I don't know how sanitary that is to eat food off of a truck. Where's your bathroom at? I've heard that question a lot of times. So yeah, you might wanna talk about the things that go into uh, maintaining a healthy, clean food truck. Learn the laws and health regulations, right? Cause your child may say, I wanna do a food truck today. Okay, but <laughs> there are some things you need to do along the way. Find out what kind of food trucks the students like. Yep, value of money, cost. I don't know if anybody has seen the great food truck race. I'm kind of obsessed with that show. All of those things that you guys are bringing up are definitely uh, factors in there. And they have to figure out how much they're gonna buy, how much food they're gonna buy. And then sometimes they run out of food and they have to go back to the store. Um, that's definitely a thing. Group brainstorm of what you need for a food truck business, product consumers, marketing, what you need to open a good truck. Where would they want to open their truck? This is all in the planning phase, all in the understanding. So yes, you're coming at it from a lot of different angles to help you to understand the food truck business because you're keeping in mind that the next step, once you have an understanding and idea of it, the next step is to, or the next portion is to create the menu, to make a decision on what is your product gonna be, right? And even though we have on our slide, we have our ultimate culminating event where they're going to physically create their food truck models, you can have miniature culminating events along the way. How do they showcase that they understand the business? How do they showcase that they understand the menu? It's probably a menu, right? How do they showcase their truck design? Different formats that they can use to demonstrate, maybe they create their logo or you know their design of the truck. So you have miniature culminating events along the way that leads to the big grand finale. Uh, and I think I saw a couple more comments. Teamwork, how working together with your peers makes a business run smooth. Yes, that's important. That's life, right? <laughs> that never goes away. We have to work on so many different teams, even as adults. So we're building skills. Going off of your mention of the food truck show, they always discuss how choosing their location will affect their income for the day. Absolutely. Sometimes they team up, they pair up, like Luz mentioned, you don't want to have ice cream next to a salad. That's not really <laughs> the best idea, especially if your market is children. Um, so where they are, sometimes they pair up with um, places of business that don't serve food. So like bars, right? So different things about location are, are important. Thank you for that. So do we have an idea of how we go from you know, sometimes we get excited and have a concept, oh, this would be great to teach with my kids. Oh, we can have this kind of showcase. And then we need to break it down to what is it that I want them to learn in the end? What is it I want them to learn every day and build upon uh, these skills that you want them to get so that by the end, they can hopefully showcase what they've learned throughout the process. And thank you, Virginia, finding out the most popular food concepts. Yeah, that goes into each stage of that because you may think it's great but if nobody wants to buy it number one rule of business or the number one objective of business is to make a profit right 
All right, any other questions, comments? All right, I hope y'all, y'all not asking any questions. You know that I like to throw pop quizzes in here, so I hope we get ready. I'm giving you a, a heads up. We can go to the next slide. Um, some tips for success, and I see something up. Ah, man, y'all quick on it. I saw Victoria first. Thank you. Shout out to Donna. Shout out to Tina. Shout out to Jessica. Thank you so much. Shout out to Don. Thank you so much. All right, our apple in the corner. Um, so some tips for success. So go beyond. Um, I can't tell you how many topics in my early stages of creating these structured activities I shied away from because I wasn't comfortable with them because I was like, man, I don't, I don't even like math or I don't even like engineering or whatever it is um but go beyond your comfort zone or what you think they may um respond well to invite a guest plan a trip somebody else has done it and they might do it better so get other people involved in your planning process and your um in your activities so that they can if you don't have the excitement we talked about you being excited about the topic maybe you don't have it maybe you need to get other people involved so that their excitement can uh, infect the students. Um, take it outside as you're able, right? They're used to seeing their, their four walls of their school. There may be some place that you can go, even if it is just in the neighborhood. We mentioned uh, looking at the trucks in the neighborhood. So take it outside your normal spots. Um, don't call it PBL or project time. For those of us who have been here a long time who may have heard those terms before, if it's something, sometimes you can associate things negatively um, and it might all automatically shoot down your your potentially fun activity that you have going on um, teamwork work with other programs work with folks in your school there might be someone you can pair up with who can help your project be a success um, i'm sorry that you aren't hearing uh virginia we're recording it so if you are able to watch this a little bit later, then that might be beneficial to you. Um, incorporate everyone's interests. So from top to the bottom. So you know you have maybe this project was, or this idea was uh, the brainchild of a few students, but make sure you get some of those stragglers in there as well, as well as your other staff and team members who can um, be equally interested and invested into this, these activities. Choosing the right time. So that matters a lot. Just like we talked about location matters, timing of the day. If you do it right after snack, before gym, after gym. Um, so choosing the time of day that you're having these activities in your schedule is very, very important. You know when you're gonna be able to get their attention um, or get their compliance uh, by when you put it into the schedule of the day. And then break it down into weekly themes. So we've been talking about that already. So this week we're focusing on the outer aspect and this week we're focusing on the middle and this week we're focusing on the inner, something like that. So have different themes to help you along the way. Any questions about any of that? We're good, all right, keep it moving because we gotta get to the good stuff. It's a coming, it's a coming. Here are a couple of websites. Here are a couple of websites that you can jot down if you're able, or again, I mean, I Google everything. Everything is out there. You just have to figure out, you know, how to make it work for you. So we have STEM lessons website, project-based websites, um, teachers pay teachers. There's so much that are free that you don't even have to pay. But if you do pay, they're like, some of them are like $5. It's not really that much. Um, that's an excellent resource. Uh, and there's also a website there for basketball lessons. I'll give you guys 30 seconds if you are writing it down because we got to get to the fun stuff and I'm excited. I'm going to give you one more opportunity to ask questions before we get into our, uh, our hands-on experiential learning. All right, 10 more seconds if you guys are writing those websites down. Just a few suggestions we have here. So much out there. All right, and next slide, please. <gasps> there we go. Is anybody as excited as I am? You should be. All right, so now is your turn. We've been talking to you a lot today and uh, you all, uh, your wheels have been turning and thank you already for your feedback. We're gonna take this opportunity uh, for you guys to practice what it is that we have learned today. So we're gonna break you up into groups 
Um, and in your groups, you're going to discuss a structured activity that you're going to create, uh, a, a fake structured activity that you're going to create. So decide in your group what model it is that you're working with. So it could be elementary, middle, or high school. That's not listed here, but it could be high school as well. Um, so decide this activity is going to be working with uh, elementary, middle, or high school. What your area of focus will be. So whether it's going to be creative and performing arts, um, athletics and health, or STEM, or what was our acronym that we learned today? Was it SEARCH? Did I say that correctly? Yes, thank you, Naomi. So um, just choose what uh, area you're going to be focusing on and then what content you want to integrate. So for our OCF, OST team, we're uh, integrating literacy, career awareness, high school prep. Um, if there's something else that your agency uh, or funders require, you can inc incorporate that as well. And what I want you to come back with is uh, an opening activity, some lesson objectives. So we're going to do this first, second, third, fourth, or however many lessons that you have, um, as well as your culminating event. So you're going to give me kind of like an elevator pitch of what your structured activity is going to be. So what are the activities you're going to do, your four, however many main activities, and your culminating event. If you have any questions, let's say you get in your group and you're completely stumped, write those questions down, some of those, and then bring it back to the group. So each group is going to um, select somebody who's gonna to present to us, to the whole group. And we're gonna learn, continue learning together. So before we split up, are there any questions? Do we understand what we're doing? Any final linger, lingering questions about what we've talked about today? So are we just hype already? Go ahead. Long, um, how long do we want uh, the breakout rooms to be? Um. 15 minutes, I think should be good. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna have 15 minutes. Any lingering questions? We understand what we're doing. Um, the recording will be available, but not in the breakout room portion, right, Naomi? Right, right. But the so I'm gonna stop recording um, during the breakout. The the recording of the session will be available probably tomorrow. I'll send out a link to everybody. Awesome. All right, structured activity. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four is gonna be this, culminating in this way. That's what you're coming back with. Are we ready? We're good? All right, thank you. All right, Naomi. There we wait, go. can't wait. We're recording again. I hope y'all pick somebody who's going to represent your groups. We still have folks finishing up in their breakout rooms. Trying to get those last words in. I'm the spokesperson for my group, but can I just run to the bathroom real quick? Go for it. Okay. Go for it. This is real life. Y'all, as some of y'all might have heard when you were coming back, uh, as soon as y'all went into your breakout rooms, I lost my internet. So uh, <laughs> I was sitting over here and lost in, in internet space and I came back, thankfully. So Lord willing, that won't happen again. We can ride out the rest of this time together. Welcome back. Some of y'all even turned your cameras on for the breakout rooms. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Thank you. I hope y'all keep them on. See some new faces. Thank you so much. So uh, again, so this process is going to be each group is going to, um, with their designated spokesperson, you're going to give us an elevator pitch of your structured activity. So you're going to share um, what your topic is what age group you're working with or model you're working with and lesson one, two, three, however many lessons you chose. And it's gonna culminate in this way, okay? Basic formula. Um, and when I say elevator pitch, you know, for those who are familiar with the terms, think about it when you're telling, you're advertising to kids or to parents, our program is this, 
you want to be able to say it quickly, concisely, and, and hopefully in, in a fun way that people will be like, huh, I want to know more about what they have going on over there. So this is just practice. Um, so do I have a group that would like to go first? I see Virginia's hand raised ready to go. Thank you so much, Virginia. You have the floor. Hello. So we chose arts and crafts and our opening activity is recycled mobile. And our lesson objectives are we want to talk about recycling, sharing the earth, compost, different types of recycling, giving back to the community. Our main activity is we want to um, do an art show on various mobiles and our Accumulating event would be showcasing the mobile on recycled material. Okay, so let's dig deep. So start with the ending. So you're going to showcase the the mobiles, right? The recycled the different, mobile. The recycled mobiles. So showcase it how? Is it going to be, I guess, kind of like an art showcase? You're just going to have them displayed in a space? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, or we can hang them up. Each mm -hmm. mobile would be hung up. Awesome. So you're going to create this recycled atmosphere. Okay, so that's your culmination. So can you break down for me again? Uh, what are the different learning points, the different lessons, um, you know, your series of lessons that you're going to do? So our main activity would be the art show on different various mobiles. So if we took them to an art show on, so I didn't write down um, the different shows but uh if we you can make them up whatever you know because you, you didn't do the research yet right so it's okay you don't have to yeah, have we didn't do that research them. part um <laughs> so we just we're taking them to the art show to, to to let them see what um different mobiles look like i i presume okay and then um for the lesson objectives we want to um talk to them about what is recycling okay what is you know saving our earth um you know what is compost i, I presume like how, you know what it is to recycle how do you recycle um mm -hmm. and then how do you give back to the community like um you know taking your recycled material like uh, clothing or what have you to different um places it says right. i have internet on, uh connection on the table sorry i hear you now it was a little funny for a second but i hear you now yep oh sorry no it's okay it's all good like i said i just had mine too so we're all in this together but thank you virginia so those are some examples of and sometimes it's just making that decision that might be the hardest part how are we going to approach this subject matter um, if whenever you're stumped, I always find those questions that you were asking the who, why, what, you know, those kind of questions can help you design your, your activity. So what is recycling? Who recycles? How do we recycle? Why do we recycle? You can uh, take those questions and, and break your project down leading to your culminating um, event that you discuss, your showcase. So that, that's a great example. Okay. Thank you so much, Virginia, for sharing that. Yay, we can give her a round of Thank applause, you. some claps. Thank you to the group. All right, who wants to go next? Who's next? I see Marcus waving his hand. Thank you so much. Go for it. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, our group, uh, we discussed that we are going to be, well, first, our group is uh, dominated with elementary students. So, uh, and also we're gonna be going with the idea that they are uh, in a recreational center. Okay. Um, so with that being said, so we are gonna be coming up with a book. Uh, so our students will be uh, coming up with a book. Um, and uh, we have three steps or three days, it might go longer, but we have three days as in our agenda. Uh, the first day, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the theme of the book. Students are going to be getting together and talking about uh, what the book should look like, what the book should have in it. And then after that, they're going to be contributing ideas. 
that's going to be like the step two part of it. And then the last step in that day will be gathering the materials uh, and knowing what they need, what they need to get. Uh, that's day one. Day two would be we will put them in breakout groups um, and they will come up with an outline and they will also do research. Uh, outlining, we just kind of uh, explain to them what an outline is. Uh, for research, you know, research can be advanced, but uh, what we plan to do is just take them to a library and just have them look at different books uh, to see how they are made, how the covers look, you know, what is in them, you know, kind of give them the basics of what the books should look like. And day three would be they would start constructing the book. They would start um, putting it together. They would start writing their own pieces in the book. Uh, and our goal of this project is uh, to promote diversity, team building, um, and learning how to uh, create a book of, you know, what they would like to have a book on. So that would be our objective. And if it goes longer than that, then uh, there would be a, like revising the story, you know, going back in there, correct things, you know, those other steps. But yeah, that would be day three. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. So your culminating project is they're creating a book, right? Um, and you mentioned some of the uh, the goals, the, them learning how to work together and creating this. So why are they making this book? Uh, just to uh, feel accomplished, uh, creating uh, a book, you know, of their own, um, just giving them confidence that they can do it, I suppose. Okay. okay. And to promote, you know, like diversity. Uh, mm -hmm. They will also be learning how to work together, you know, especially when it comes to building uh, building a piece such as a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, those are good points. I'm, I'm asking that because, again, when you're you're – Thinking about the end, what you want them to walk away with, what skill they're uh, learning. So a theme might be, you know, we're learning how to tell our story since you said that they're working together. So whatever the hour is, um, whether it's, you know, ours in the, our age group, our as in the cultural group, cohort, you know, our our pen, we're all in this pandemic together. So we're a, spe a special cohort. Um, so whatever the hour is, but at the end, you want them to uh, have gained skills in that area to be able to. Uh oh, I think she <laughs> she may have gone out again. But oh, okay, I was wondering, like, wait, what happened? <laughs> yeah, like an hour too. <laughs> 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 um, but what I'm assume um, Shalay was going to say was that you know, kind of in um, in order to like build upon each other and all of that. Um, Marcus, I did have a question. So in my in my head, I was thinking that each student would possibly write their own story or would they kind of have just one shared story? Oh, everyone will be writing their own story, their own experiences of, about what they, what they have learned in the recreational center, the things that they like in the rec recreational center and the things that they don't like in the recreational center, their own individual idea, their own page. Awesome, awesome. great, thank you. Um, and then I was also thinking about, um, you know, be, even before the, um, they get into like the the storytelling, possibly having a session or a lesson around like what it means to, to tell a story or to write mm -hmm. down a story and then allowing them to kind of build upon those skills. So that could also be just one lesson that you could add on um, to the project. Right. I think that I Crystal's hand after Marcus's. So do you, Crystal, do you wanna go? <clears throat> yes, I'll go. Um, so my group for the culminating event, we said we were going to do a cultural art show. Um, the open activity that we thought was good for this would be to learn about um, the different urban artists um, for creative ideas. We could show pictures of work um, from the different artists. Uh, we didn't say this, but I got the idea from um, Virginia. We could do like a, a, a virtual trip because of mm -hmm. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Or we can mm -hmm. actually go on, you know, a, a trip to um, an urban museum if we could find one. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first objectives would be for the kids to do research, um, research and information on different urban artists. Mm -hmm. um, after they were to do their research, then they will hone in or look up one specific painting or artist of their interest. Um, uh, somebody in my group, I can't remember her name, I'm sorry. She said that she brought up a good, uh, a good point that um, with the older artists, they may use like ink and a feather pen and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, 
with that's not as modern. So uh, the third thing would be to figure out how to modernize the painting and use what we have um, to recreate that activity. Um, the fourth objective would be giving the children the opportunity to gather the materials needed, because like I said, we have to figure out what's needed. Um, and then our main activity would be replicating the artist's work. Awesome. Thank you. Um, a lot of uh, art museums, as, I know definitely the Philadelphia Museum of Art, but a lot of other art museums around the country have their collections online. So you can always like go and look up um, their like pieces. Um, and uh, I definitely know with the, um, with the art museum that um, a lot of their, um, their works have a lesson plan with them. So you can print out that lesson plan. I don't know if, I know the art museum has um, a center in the in their other building um, called the Wachovia Education Resource Center. So if you ever have some time, um, you can go over there and they have tons of posters, they have lesson plans, they have um, computers that you can use to like research stuff. So utilize those free resources um, uh, for you know, for that project, and then you saw like I think Crystal, you were talking about you know some like the local um, artists like Henry, Henry Tanner and Dots Thrash and like all of those um, those folks that are um, local to our um, our community. So yeah, thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I told y'all <laughs> I gave us all a heads up. My internet was uh, acting crazy today. Thank you, Naomi, for holding the fort down, and uh, everybody for continuing. So who's I our, our one next? more? I feel like we have one more group, maybe, maybe two. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Go for it. Um, um. So our group decided to work with high school and uh, to focus on art. And uh, we came up with kind of a kind of a, like one or two week long uh, plan based on how many times you're visiting. So either twice a week for two weeks or four days for the one week. Um, and our goal was being mindful of Earth, talking about recycling, and um, to weave a. Uh, our main activity was going to be to weave a rug out of recycled fabric, out of old fabric. And so as an introduction, we were going to do some trivia, maybe some questions on like how many pounds of waste does one person, you know, create on average in a year, just different questions as a thing to get people interested and calling stuff out. And then for our main activity to teach a like simple weaving technique um, and show examples of what it can look like if you keep it going. Um, and yeah, to have them work on it. And our uh, closing reflection would be um, probably observation based, like noting whether or not they're all engaged um, and also the product, how well they're able to, to complete. Um, and yeah, I think checking it out also as like a a mindfulness practice too, like how can weaving, how can artwork be a practice to check in with where you're at and take a break from other things that are going on around you. Awesome, thank you for, for sharing that. I think that's great. Uh, the the last point that you made is definitely, you know, a big why, you know, why are we doing this? What do we hope to learn and get, get out of it at the end? And um, just adding to some of those reflection pieces, thinking for how can they take this, especially since you're working with high school, how can they take and apply it to their lives, maybe sharing it with others, um, make an impact, you know, beyond just that one project. So also reflection pieces to add to that. But that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much to you and your group. Um, anyone else? Did we have another group? Yes. Can you hear me? Am I? Oh, oh that's not. Um, okay. So um, in our group, we kind of went off of the food truck example that was presented, but ours is a um, a sports truck. It's a business. It's a sports gear business. Um, so we have elementary students and. There, the culminating event or culminating project would be a showcase of this sports business. It would be um, you showcase 
your business, the business plan, and your design of this truck that you've made. Um, our first, our opening activity would be an icebreaker game called Don't Break the Ice. And then a discussion on what students like to play, different um, sports they're interested in. Um, our first objective would be to research, have the kids research what, um, what kids like to play, what um, sports they're interested in, where kids like to play. Our second objective, learn what items to sell, what would be a good thing to market to other students, what other children. Is it um, Gatorade? Is it a basketball? Is it a football? Is it football gloves, you know, cleats? Um, and they would have to determine if they're, if it's gonna be like geared towards one sport or if it's going to be geared towards all sports. Um, and then our third objective is the location research. Where would you have it? Is it gonna be at a playground or is it gonna be um, at an open field? Is it gonna be outside of a school? And then our last objective would be to design your truck and your, um, your business plan. So that's our that's our um, project. Thank you, Jessica. I love um, that you included um, a business plan because, frankly, like a business plan could take a couple days of lessons. <laughs> so that um, it, you know that like makes it a little more um, detailed when they're able to like create a lesson plan along with some of their their ideas. So like building a, a building upon their ideas and then putting it into a plan. Um, sound sounded really really cool. Thank you. All right, do we have any more groups that need to present? I think you, I think you said it was five groups. That was five that presented. Yeah, yeah I think that was it. Okay, okay. Um, are there any lingering questions, final thoughts, reflections? I think it sounds like everyone got it, which is, which is great. Um, we understand the thought process to uh, structuring our program, structuring our activities in a way that we can have, um, you know, an objective at the end, a culmination at the end. Any lingering thoughts, questions, comments? Yes, Natalie. Hi, um, I had a coworker of mine who gave me like a great idea. Um, I don't know how you put it into play. But a lot of like the Philadelphia RSIs and um, the people who work with children and come up with ideas, it would be great to have some sort of like, I don't know, like a Facebook page or community page where we all could put our own ideas down or like what we're doing with the children. And this way it gives us ideas of what we could do in our lesson plans, maybe one week or one month or I'll kind of like spread the love together, <laughs> you know, give some ideas. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I mean, so on um, kind of our OCF OST side, we have uh, these monthly meetings called communities of practice, where we kind of talk about best practices and all of that stuff. And we can certainly work with um, Stephanie to kind of figure out how to um, possibly braid some of the Philadelphia Parks and Rec folks into that as well. So we're all kind of working together because at the end of the day, we're all working on the behalf of kids, right? We all like, we're all here for the kids, different settings, different ages, different experiences, but all still the same. And we wanna um, just always make sure that, um, that we're producing quality programming amongst all of the different departments and all of the different funding streams and all of that stuff. So thank you so much for that, Natalie. We'll definitely kind of figure out how to do that. Yes, and After School Alliance, um, I'm not sure if, if you folks are familiar with that, but that's a national organization. I believe they're based out in California, but they have uh, a lot of resources on their website. I think it's afterschoolalliance.org, um, if I'm not mistaken, but they have similar to what you're describing. 